Okay, chat. So we're gonna go rank every single one of the bosses from the Mighty Seven. The Mighty Seven games. This is going to be my list. Therefore, it is subjective. There might be things that I like that you don't like. And there might be things that I don't like that you like. So don't start saying a bunch of really cringe ass comments, disagreeing with everything that I say. Um, but with that being said, if anybody does disagree with something, mods, ban them. No one's allowed to disagree. Anyway, starting off, Demon Souls, the Vanguard. Um, um, pretty bad, honestly. I mean, it's meh. It's like an introduction to the game. You're like meant to die. Doesn't really have that interesting of a moveset. But it did like inspire the good old Asylum Demons and the Erdtree Avatars later in the game. So we, we have to give some respect to it. Um, the Phalanx, that is a bad boss fight. It is a cool concept. I don't really care to hit a fucking shield over and over again. Um, this thing has like one attack, which is just a poke. Actually, it has two attacks. It does throw the spear as well. Um, but the main boss doesn't do anything. It's like a big giant blob. Um, not interesting. Not fun. Don't like it. Uncool. I disagree with that. Somebody ban him. I'm kidding. I'm um, Tower Knight. I like the Tower Knight. I think it's a good boss fight. I think it looks really cool. He has cool attacks. It's not too like clunky or really bad at all. It's just a pretty cool boss fight that's actually done pretty well in terms of fighting like a large boss. Like, you know, you hit its legs, it collapses down, hit him in the head. It does it pretty well. It's nothing too offensive or crazy. Armored Spider. I like the Armored Spider. I think the Armored Spider is good. I like this boss fight. I don't want to say about it. It has like three different melee attacks. All of them feel like pretty nice to dodge or like, you know, nothing too crazy. Like a lot of the Demon Souls bosses are just very basic. They get like three attacks, but they tend to have like a pretty cool mechanic or something that's like pretty interesting. Um, like with a Fool's Idol, this one basically, it like the mechanic itself was not even that crazy, but like they feel the need to copy it like a thousand times because this thing is basically like pinwheel in the crystal stage. Um, but just the Demon Souls version. So I'm gonna say meh, because I don't really like teleporting bosses that spam projectiles. But she is a baddie, so meh. Um, Adjudicator, the Discord mod. Um, um, I'm gonna say bad, because you have to like hit it in its one particular spot over and over again, and that does not make the fight fun, because you only get like one attack. Um, you can, it makes the fight a lot easier when you have projectiles, but then you're dodging the tongue over and over again. I just don't think it's that cool or interesting at all. And sometimes when you're trying to hit that one particular spot, you just like deflect your weapon off a whole bunch. It's nothing interesting. I feel like the Tower Knight did this, did the exact same thing as the Adjudicator, just like way more interesting. It's like the exact same concept. But this one is just worse. Um, Leechmonger. Um, another bad boss fight. Basically, it's just like a DPS check. Um, shit area as well. And the boss fight has like three attacks. None of them are really distinguishable. You can't really like really understand where the fuck... Actually, I want to say terrible. I don't like this boss fight at all. <laughs> it gets like three attacks with a bunch of flailing around. You have no idea what's going on. Um, Flame Lurker is good though. Flame Lurker is good. I'm not going to say like amazing. I think it's a great boss fight. A lot of Demon Souls bosses are nothing like too crazy. Um, this one can be annoying with like the lingering hitbox AoEs. I'm not a fan of that. But like here's a nice challenge. So he actually does have more of a complex and nuanced moves that compared to all the other bosses. Um, Dragon God, I'm gonna say meh. Like it's a gimmick boss fight, it works the exact same way as the Bed of Chaos, but at the very least for the Dragon God, it actually looks cool. So yeah, I'm gonna say meh. Man Eaters, I think this is a terrible boss fight. Actually, no, it's fucking garbage, holy shit, it's terrible. I think the AI is beyond awful. Like every single time the Man Eaters like just jumps off the ledge, it just constantly flies over and over and over again. And it gets like, it's attacks that it does get is actually not even that bad. So I'll say terrible instead. Some of the attacks are okay, but like the AI is just so shit. If like the arena wasn't so skinny and it was like a circle instead, I feel like I'd like the boss fight a lot more. And like the, in terms of like the duo fight concept, eh, it's okay. I think it plays a lot around like having one fly around while the other one's like on the ground, but like it doesn't really work out that way sometimes. Um, so I'm gonna say terrible because it's a bit clunky. Old Hero. I think Old Hero is a good boss fight. I like the me I, a lot of them have cool mechanics, but they're just too basic. Like Old Hero has some like cool attacks that you can dodge. I think I like him about here. The fact that he's blind is pretty cool, I guess. <laughs> Makes it a cool, like interesting mechanic, and it does look really nice. Um, Penetrator is an amazing boss fight. I like Penetrator. Definitely the best boss fight in Demon Souls. 
has a bunch of really cool looking attacks, all feel very nice to dodge. You can strafe some of the attacks too. Any attacks that you can strafe automatically makes the boss fight really good because having to dodge attacks more than just clicking the dodge button, I like that concept. Um, Dirty Colossus. I'm gonna say um, bad. It gets like two attacks and that's about it. <laughs> it doesn't do anything special. It's just a couple of attacks. Old Monk, I'm gonna say meh. Like the fight itself is shit, but it's like a PvP boss fight and I I like PvP boss fights, so I'm gonna say good, I guess. Whatever. Actually, no, it's not. Meh. <laughs> Demon Souls PvP is kind of shit, so. I think Storm King is really good. I think the Storm King is one of the better um, gimmick boss fights, although I'm probably not gonna say amazing though, because it's still a gimmick boss fight. It is really atmospheric, the music is amazing. This, it's a very good cinematic experience. Um, in terms of like the first part of the fight can be a good, bit cringe, especially without the thief ring. It can be a bit boring at times as well. Uh, Made in Australia is not really much of a boss fight as it is kind of just like a atmospheric moment in the game. So I'm just gonna say good. Like the boss fight is just an NPC, but it is a very cool atmospheric moment in the game. So I'm gonna say good for that one. And then Alant, I'm going to say good as well. I am not that big of a fan of Alant. This is actually more top heavy than I thought. No. Arm and Spider is meh. Fuck that. <laughs> um, we have to balance it out a little bit. I like Alant except for those stupid bullshit quick attacks. That's the only thing that stopped me from putting it into the amazing tier. I think Penetrator is way more balanced. Um, old, Al old King Alant has way too much health. He can swing way too fast. Kind of cringe attacks sometimes. Anyway, True King Alant, yeah, I guess it's, it's a terrible boss fight, but it's kind of like, you know, a stray I'll say this is bad. <laughs> it's not really meant to be a boss fight anyway. It's just more meant to be like a atmospheric experience. Anyway, moving on to Dark Souls 1. Asylum Demon, the second iteration of the Vanguard. Um, of which we are putting into the meh tier as well. <laughs> right next to the Vanguard. It's the same fucking thing. Taurus Demon. Cool boss entrance. I'm gonna say meh still because it gets like two attacks and one of its like AOE attacks has a stupid lingering hitbox and the hitboxes can be kind of weird. But it is very memorable. So I would say good. As is Bell Goggles. I think Bell Goggles is really cool. One of the better duo boss fights, mainly because it's pretty easy. But you just got a few attacks. It's memorable. I like it. I put Taurus Demon in the Met here, actually. Uh, Moon Knight Butterfly, fucking terrible. It looks really cool. It has nice music. That is the only positive thing I can say. It is an absolute snooze fest. Otherwise, Capra Demon. I'm just gonna say bad. Like, there's some things that I, I don't mind the 1v1 fight. It's not too bad. When you can kill the dogs pretty quickly, it's okay. But, like, the arena is too small. Sometimes you get caught on a corner, the tree can ca cover up the entire camera. I do not like that. Um, so I'm just going to say bad. I think like the camera is the worst part about the fight. And obviously dogs, but you know. It is what it is. Gaping Dragon, I'm going to say meh. I'm pretty meh on the Gaping Dragon. I don't like the charge attack and the stupid hitboxes that, that one gets. And it's like trying to wait for him to get like a specific attack off. Although it was a very cool, memorable opening cutscene, I guess, but... Um, Quailag is a good boss fight. I don't think I put it in amazing tier because he still gets like three melee attacks and then like the spider gets like an AoE attack. It's nothing too crazy. Like compared to the, what we get now, I'll probably put it good. I'd put it good. Iron Golem, meh. It's just pretty satisfying. The best part about the fight is when you ledge kill him. Knocking off the ledge is like the coolest thing about it, but like he does get weird hitboxes as well. Stupid AoE. Lingering hitboxes, the grab attack that goes behind him. But ledge killing him is funny. Um, Ornstein and Smo. Amazing. I'm not gonna say masterpiece. Actually, fuck it, masterpiece. I don't care what anybody says. For the time, it was fucking great. Well, then again, if I'm saying that, then I should put quite like higher than as well. So no. I'll say amazing for Ornstein and Smo. I'll probably put it in comparison to like all the other boss fights. Because it hasn't aged very well at all. But I still like the boss fight. It has amazing music. It's probably the coolest concept for a duo boss fight until you get to the Demon Princes. Um, it's just like weird hitbox issues sometimes and then Ornstein can be really buggy. Those are the issues, but um, it's still really good. Uh, Priscilla, cool concept, kind of shit though. I don't know, fighting an invisible boss can be cool if you like, you know, because you can see where they are, but like they can hit you while that happens, which is pretty annoying. She doesn't like really do anything special. So. <laughs> People just like her because of her feet. Bad. I'm Gwendolyn. 
Bad boss fight as well. I don't care what anybody says. People only like Gwendolyn because it's a dude with tits. It's just literally projectile spam and just chasing them over and over again. No. We're not doing that. Um, Seath. Also bad. Is it? Yeah, Seath is pretty shit, yeah. Very big missed opportunity with Seath. Could have been so much cooler. It's just like AoE spam and that is basically it. God, Dark Souls 1 boss fights are fucking mid. Holy shit. <laughs> Sif, meh. I don't care. I'll say good. <laughs> I'm not gonna be that much of a hater. I still don't like any like many dog bites boss fights, I'm not gonna lie. Um Sif gets like three attacks. It, there is a cool like interaction when you get him like weak or her weak and then starts limping around. That's kinda cool, I guess. But like it's not nothing that crazy. Sometimes the AI can be a bit jank and shitty. It's it's not that fun of a fight, honestly. Um If you like remove the lore. Then nobody would really care about Sif, let's be real. Um, Four Kings. I like the Four Kings. I think the Four Kings is a good boss fight. I like them better than Quaylike. I think they're really nice. Um, some of the attacks can be kind of weird to like trying to judge where the fuck is going to hit you because the arena is like really dark. But I actually like some of their attacks. They actually feel pretty cool to dodge. And it feels like a nice DPS check as well. Otherwise you get overwhelmed by a bunch of them. So I think it's a really cool concept. Uh, Caesar's Discharge is a bad boss fight. In fact, I think it's a terrible boss fight. It gets like two attacks. They're like borderline impossible to dodge. And it just fucks up your camera every single time that you get hit by it. But yeah, you just cheese it every single time. <clears throat> every single time. Centipede Demon. Absolute fucking garbage. There should be a tier below garbage. That's where the Centipede Demon belongs. There is no boss fight in the entire series that has a worse camera than a Centipede Demon. I will refuse to believe otherwise. It also gets like two attacks and every single time that it keeps doing that stupid lunging arm attack when it's in the lava, you're just waiting for it to come towards you. And then it gets a stupid jumping attack, you can't really see where the fuck it's going. It's just shit. Terrible. Awful. Um, Demon Fire Stage is just a reskin version of the, um, what do you call it? The Silent Demon, basically a one-for-one -one reskin. But it's it doesn't even do fire damage though. It's called the Demon Fire Stage. It does magic damage and it's weak to fire. Go figure. Um, bad. Bed of Chaos, fucking garbage. I'm not even gonna talk about it. I'm not gonna waste my precious time and my breath on that fucking piece of shit thingy. Um, Stray Demon, another reskin. Oh no, Stray Demon is the reskin of the uh, Demon Sage, yeah. It's like a slight bit better version though, but like it's still not a good boss fight. But it does have a massive dump truck. Cool. Meh. Pinwheel! <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Imagine dying a pinwheel. Couldn't be me, right? Never happens. It's basically just like a reskinned version of, um, what's her name? The Fool's Idol. Basically the same fucking thing, but just worse. <laughs> Has like no health and gets like one attack. That's not cool. Um, Gravelord Nito. I think meh. It could have been so much better. Don't know why it wasn't. It's just like a boss with ads in the fucking boss room. I do not like that concept. Just have the boss fight be a good boss fight. Then you will need to actually be surrounded by a bunch of other enemies. It gets like a couple of attacks, all of which look pretty cool. Um, but I feel like it could have been way better for what he was. Especially for how important he is. It's not, not as bad as an egregious offense of the Bed of Chaos. I will talk a bit about the Bed of Chaos. I think the gimmick itself is not the worst thing in the world. I think the fact that this is supposed to be one of the most important characters and you turned it into a fucking tree. That's my biggest issue. Um, Sanctuary Guardian. Um, good. No, I think it's meh. I don't like the Sanctuary Guardian. He doesn't have much health and he keeps fucking attacking and I think it's a bit too fast for um Dark Souls 1 pacing because basically as he finishes his combos, like he can dodge his combos fairly well, but as soon as he finishes, he basically just dodges away. Um, He kind of fights like the Red Wolf of Radagon, kind of. But his attacks are kind of cool though. I might say, uh, I might say good, low good. I like him, somewhat. I just wish he didn't teleport, like jump around as much. Um, Artorius, I think, amazing. I want to put Masterpiece, because he's still pretty basic. I think it's just like a Penetrator. One for one with a Penetrator. But he's probably a bit cooler than Penetrator, though. Because he gets front flipping attacks, and he gets the buff as well. Which is nice. But he doesn't get like a cool grab attack, though. It's a nice comparison. Who do you guys like better, Artorius or Penetrator? Probably Artorius, right? I don't like Master- I want to put a Masterpiece because I think his hitboxes still kind of suck. He hasn't really aged as well. 
Because I don't like his weird hitboxes sometimes. But he is a fun fight though. We'll see. We might put it into the masterpiece. We'll see. I like Manus more though. I like Manus more. Ah. Manus also has weird hitboxes too. <laughs> <laughs> but I like Manus more either. He's more nuanced of a boss fight, and I feel like you have just as many openings, but like you have to like learn a bit more of the boss fight. I think he has a cooler Hello, second phase. Uh, Tori's the second phase isn't as cool, I don't think. Because incorporating a lot of like the cool projectile attacks, I think it makes for a nice mix up. I like Manus. Um, I like Calamites the best in this DLC. I don't care what anybody says. I still don't think Masterpiece though. They haven't really aged as well, they're still pretty basic for their time. Um, I love Calamite though. I think he looks really cool. All of his attacks feel nice to dodge and like learning his moveset is really nice. It doesn't really feel too frustrating except for when he does that like the neck swiping attack and your hitbox or your character gets pushed into the hitbox. That's the worst part about the boss fight. So in that case, I might like Manus more than him. But I still think they're all amazing. We're going to save the masterpiece tier for like amazing, amazing stuff. And then Gwyn is fucking terrible. The guy gets like insanely fast attacks and they're basically just meant to be fucking parried because they're just ridiculous damage. They're so fast and they do a lot of damage. And like all of them have like the exact same animation, but they're slightly bit different timings. It's like so stupid. He doesn't get any fucking cool lightning attacks. Nothing cool. He just, <laughs> he just gets like, I don't know what he's even, what does he even do? Just a bunch of sword swipes. And he's the final boss. What a shame. What's a shame? I might say bad. I think it's like missed opportunity. I don't think it's terrible though. <laughs> we'll say bad. Biggest missed opportunity outside of better chaos. Anyway, Dark Souls 2. Holy shit, there's a lot. Ugh, last giant. Fucking bad. I don't know. It does like two things. That's about it. Um, Pursuer. I like the Pursuer. I think it's really good. Good boss fight. Doesn't do anything too crazy. A lot of his attacks can be strafed, but strafing attacks is based. I like it when you can strafe attacks, especially in Dark Souls 2, because dodging consumes so much stamina. So that's really cool. Dragon Rider. Meh. It, I don't know. It's like the epitome of meh. When you think of meh, you think of Dragon Rider. It does like three things, and that's about it. He doesn't even look that cool either. Just meh. Same thing as old Dragon. There's going to be so much meh. Holy shit. <laughs> There's going to be so much meh. This is just Ornstein, but like, yeah. It's like the exact same fucking thing, except for like one extra attack and just by himself. It's just like a reskin. I don't know. If Ornstein didn't exist, I might like him a bit more, but because like it's just fucking Ornstein. Like, I don't care. I like the Flexile Sentry though. I think Flexile Sentry is good. I'll put him high good tier. Um, yes. I like the fact that it's just you go to one side, it has a different moveset than the other side. You're fighting in a sinking pirate ship. I think the whole concept is done really well. Um, some of the movesets can be kind of cringe when you're fighting specifically the Curve Sword version. Can be a bit quick and like roll catching attacks can be kind of cringe, but I think the concept is done well. Ruin Sentinels is just a pretty basic duo or trio boss fight. I'm just gonna say meh. I think fighting them 1v1 is not too bad. It can be a bit annoying. Doesn't really do much. Maybe when like one's like spamming like the shield projectile attack, it could be okay and serviceable as a duo boss fight. You can fight them like one at a time if you can keep like positioning yourself correctly on the platform, but I don't know, it's still pretty meh. It does have a really banging OST though. It has like the best OST in the base game, I think. So I think for that reason alone, you put it into the good tier. Banging OST. Um, Belfry Goggles, fucking terrible. You can't just reskin the same fucking Goggles boss fight and just make it worse. Disrespectful Lost Center, I think Lost Center is pretty good. Probably a bit above Ruin Sentinels though. But then again, some of his, his charging running attack has some pretty weird hitboxes. Has like lingering effects. But he's pretty cool though. I like the concept of fighting in like a dark room and some nice attacks. Cool animations. He's nice. Skeleton Lords, terrible. I don't fucking care to fight skeletons like literally ever. And it's just a bunch of them in a room. Executioners, Chariots, meh. In terms of like a gimmick boss fight, it doesn't really do anything too crazy because you know, you just get uh, a bunch of skeletons in the room as well. And the Executioner's Chariot, like the horse itself has weird hitboxes. I don't like it. I don't like it that much. But like, it's a cool concept though. But I think that's what carries it. And then Covetous Demon, the goat! The goat! 
I'm gonna put him above Gwyn, just to disrespect Gwyn. <laughs> it's just a big giant blob. Double the hut. Bring me Han Solo. Justice for Moonlight Butterfly? Fuck out of here. Mytha. Um, Mytha. What are my thoughts on Mytha? She's not like the worst thing. Some of her attacks can be kind of annoying. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I think about her. I think she's just meh. <laughs> that's like, that's the definition of meh, I guess. When you have no fucking idea. I think the Smelter Demon is amazing. Right up there with the Penetrator. I think it's a really good boss fight. I like this boss fight. All of its attacks feel really nice to learn and dodge. Really good nuance. I think like the annoying thing is like a small arena, but I think that's what adds to like the challenge. I mean, actually the worst part about it is like the boss run back, I guess, for like both of them, but... I'm a big Smelter Demon fan. My favorite base game boss for real. Old Iron King, another meh boss fight. He doesn't even look that cool, I'm not gonna lie. I think his design looks pretty goofy. He looks kind of stupid. Um, cool looking attacks though, but like it's nothing too crazy though. I like him better though. Probably put up high meh. High meh. Najika is just like a discount Quailag. But you can ride Najika, and riding Najika is based. Good. Um, Royal Rat Authority, fuck every single dog. Um, all of them are terrible, I hate fighting every single one. And um, the 1v1 fight with the big dog itself is kind of just shit, honestly. It does like one charge attack and that's about it. Weird hitboxes too. Same as this garbage trash, I don't know why the fuck that's even a boss. What's the point of even putting that a boss? Like just have, it them in have these enemies in a room, like why make it a boss? I don't know. <laughs> I mean more souls I guess, that's cool. Uh, Freya. Meh. I don't like spiders. What's good about this boss fight? I don't know. I'm trying to think. Like, the design is nice. The fact that you can go from one side to the other and fight either one. You can cut off its head to, like, get rid of, it, like, the some of its attacks, I guess, which is nice. But it kind of fucks you up more than anything when you knock off its head. The spiders surrounding them can make the fight really obnoxious, but, like, using a torch just mitigates that completely. If it wasn't for the torch, I'd probably put it into the bads here, honestly. Um, Royal Rats Vanguard is another terrible boss fight. It's just a bunch of rats in a fucking room, which I guess is kind of based. Just putting a thousand rats in a room is pretty funny. <clears throat> but still, fuck you. Um, I actually like the Rotson. I think the Rotson's pretty cool. I think he's pretty cool. I'll put him up here. He's nothing too crazy. Um, he's in, like, having dismemberment is pretty cool. Like, knocking off his arms and stuff like that, and seeing him, like, hit his, like, little nubs, and just, like, do, like, zero damage. That's pretty funny. But his attacks, they feel nice to dodge. Nothing too crazy, I don't know. <laughs> I just like him, I don't know why. Twin Dragon Riders, another meh boss fight. This fight's like over like in three seconds anyway. I'm looking Glass Knight. Good. Do I put it in amazing? Probably not. I put it high good. High good tier. Fuck it, amazing. Why not? It's PvP as well. It's probably the best. PvP concept boss fight. Why not? Really cool arena, cool looking boss, nice attacks. The fact that the shield actually works like a shield is pretty based. Until like it fucks you up. The semen of dung. It looks funny. Um, the hitboxes are kind of shitty because it has like stupid AOEs with the slamming attacks. Don't like that. It's nothing too crazy. It's like a funny concept. I'd say meh. Uh, Velstat is really good though. I like Velstat. I put him high good tier. Mainly because he looks really badass, but yeah, some of his attacks are pretty nice. I don't think I like him as much as Smelter Demon though. Doesn't feel like as nuanced. And he's a bit like too easy sometimes. Like when the second phase starts, a lot of his attacks are pretty punishable. Um, Vendrick, it's kind of just like um, made in Australia. I put it into the meh tier. It's just meant to be an atmospheric moment. Not really meant to be anything different. Where even is made in Australia? Where is she? I can't see now. I should have put her into the mats here, didn't I? Where the fuck is she? <laughs> I put her into the good tier. Okay. Put them together. 
It's a shit boss fight. It's just meant to be an atmospheric moment. Which, to be fair, it's one of the coolest atmospheric moments in the game. So I'd probably put them both in the good tier. I lie. I lie. I lie. Guardian Dragon. Bad. Don't like it. Dragon flies around too much. Kind of stupid. It looks cool, though. Angel Dragon, even worse. Terrible. Actually, fuck that garbage. Way too much health. And it jumps around a whole bunch, too. Um, Giant's Lord. I'ma say, meh. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a big giant. It gets like three attacks. But though it does give you a lot of souls. Dark Lurker. I fucking like this boss fight. I'ma say amazing. I think this is like one of the few... Like the fact that you have a duo boss fight that spams projectiles and actually have the boss fight be good is actually fucking insane. Like how do they manage that? That's honestly impressive. I'ma say like a bottom amazing tier. Because it still is like, you know, I do a boss fight that spans projectiles. The run back is like fucking terrible though. Probably the worst run back in the series. Um, but he looks really cool. Nice design. The boss fight as a duo concept is actually really nice and interesting. I think they did well with that one. I like that one. Um, Throne Watcher and Defender though, I think this duo boss fight can go suck a fat fucking dick. When you have a duo boss fight that are both this aggressive sometimes, you have to have a pillar. You need pillars. If there's no pillar, then I can't make this work. Because I only need, like, you have like projectiles. You need projectiles to make this work. Fighting these bosses with like mid damage at melee distance is like so incredibly fucking cringe. <coughs> um, I'm gonna say fucking bad. I don't give a fuck. I don't like it. Do a boss fights without pillars. No, doesn't work. Um, Aldia. Terrible. Dog shit. Like, oh my god. Like how you have like one of the coolest characters of all time and you make the boss fight. This fucking shit. <laughs> like, come on, dude. Like, they literally had Nishandra. The, like, the final boss. They, fuck, they fucked up so hard with the final boss in this game. They're like, let's redo it again. With a different final boss. Put it in the exact same boring looking boss arena. At least actually gave him actually a pretty good OST. And then made the boss fight mechanically worse. Like it's a fine boss fight. If it wasn't just the final one. And it wasn't Aldia. It could have been something cooler. I guess like three attacks and that's it. Same thing as Nishandra. Nishandra gets like three attacks and it's the final boss fight. Why? Anyway, DLC time. Alana. She's cool. Alana is good. I like Alana. Except for when you actually see someone's Vel stat. Probably don't like her as much. <laughs> um, good design. The teleporting concept actually isn't even too frustrating. The summoning can be a bit annoying, but it does balance it around it, so it's not that bad. I like Alana. Sin. <sighs> I'm gonna say meh. I'm gonna say meh. Like sometimes you fight Sin, it could be an, it could be a really good boss fight. Most other times I fight Sin, it's just fucking shit. He just flies around way too much with like a lot of different runs that you do. You can like just cheese him by being directly in front and keep baiting like the overhead slam thingy. But like it's just such a mid boss fight, honestly. If he just didn't fly around as much and got like an extra like melee combo and made his head like a bit more like be able to hit him, I guess? I don't know. Probably not the head. You can do fine damage to hitting his body. I think if he just didn't fly around as much. And he does break your weapon pretty easily too. Yeah, that's kind of shit. Yeah. I think it's meh. But when he does it, it's kind of like the Elden Beast. When like he stops flying and teleporting around a whole bunch, I think it's perfectly fine. But it just doesn't happen most of the time. And yeah, just fucking NPC gank fight. Yeah, I don't care. Like, it's an NPC fight. And it's a gank. <laughs> Absolutely not. Which I don't mind fighting ganks in PvP, because, you know, you can outskill them. But these are like AI, so they can input read and do some dumb shit. And they feel like they have like infinite stamina all the time. Fume Knights! Oh, finally we get to talk about good boss fights. Okay, amazing. Masterpiece. Masterpiece! Flawless! Fume Knight. 10 out of 10 boss fight. Everything about it is fucking fantastic. I love every single second of this boss fight. Um, really cool looking attacks. Good movesets. Good mechanics. He's actually much more nuanced than a lot of the Dark Souls 1 boss fights. Like, definitely took a step up with the Fume Knights, as is Sir Alone. Absolute masterpiece of a boss fight. 
Should I put one of these bosses in the Masterpiece tier 2? I don't know, Sora alone, cool boss arena, cool attacks, amazing OST. I think this is the start of like the boss fights really getting good. Really getting good. I like Blue Smelter Demon. I like him better than the regular Smelter Demon, but it is just a reskin boss fight. So I'm probably not going to put it into the amazing tier. I probably put it into the good tier. But even though I still like it, it's just a reskin. Um, anyway. And then the third DLC. <laughs> Ava. Weird hitboxes, kind of cringe, don't like it. Um, pretty meh. Pretty meh. Burnt Ivory King. Um, the first part of the boss fight I fucking hate. Like, I really do. Like, you have to get, like, all of the stupid soldiers, I forgot they're called, to help you out. And just to make that first part of the boss fight not shit. And it just lasts way too long as well. And by the time that you actually get to the good boss fight, it's just too late. I don't care. Like, it's a cool atmospheric moment, and I like it the first time. But, like, when you're doing it multiple times, it's just not fun. Not fun at all. But the 1v1 fight is actually really good. I would honestly put it into the amazing tier if the first part of the fight wasn't so shit. Because it just I just don't like it. I hate it every time. But if it was if that wasn't so frustrating, I'd literally put it into the amazing tier. Or a masterpiece. I kind of want to put Manus and Artorius in there. No, that's fine. Lot and Zalan can go suck a dick. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> Fuck that run back. Um, Cleric Beast. Okay, blood one time. Um, Cleric Beast, cool boss entrance. It kind of is just like a ripoff of the Taurus Demon in Dark Souls 1. Um, good OST. Um, it is a very large boss fight. Therefore, 90% of the difficulty is the camera. I'm gonna say a high meh. If the camera wasn't so shit, I'd probably like him a bit more. Gascoigne is a fucking masterpiece there. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> Gascoigne is a masterpiece. Um, really good atmospheric fight. Amazing OST. Cool sound design. Good fucking uh, moveset. Nice to parry. Nice to dodge. Second phase is really cool as well. The interaction with the music box and the lore with his kids. I think it's fucking an amazing boss fight. Caps off the best area in the game in Central Yarnum. Um, Bloodstuffed Beast. I cannot say the fucking same thing. I hate this guy. Um, just bad. Don't care. A lot of boss, a lot of Bloodborne bosses just suffer from just flailing around a whole bunch. They don't even get like a moveset. They just like flail around. And they're just meant to be parried. Like, that's what the game centers around. But like, in terms of a boss fight, no. And like the poison is like mega cringe as well. Don't like it. Uh, which is a handwork, fucking terrible. Um, basically, the way to fight this boss fight is just to like either not have insights or like just edge the boss. Edge the boss's health. Because if you like kill one, then it's spam projectiles and they like, teleport away and it's just like a shitty gimmick boss fight. I don't like it at all. Uh, Vicar Amelia, I think is also meh. I think in the same thing as the Cleric Beast. Like it's cool. Some of the attacks can be cool to dodge. They basically, they share the exact same OST as well. But Vicar Amelia, just the camera. 90% of the fight is the camera. It's just like, you have no idea what the fuck's happening half the time. It's like just zoom the fucking camera out so I can see what I'm getting hit by. It's the same thing. But like, she's cool though. But the camera's a fucking problem. Shadows of Yarnum. A whole body becoming a hitbox? Yeah, true, yeah. She'll do like some stupid charge attack, then you get hit by a toe, then you just fucking take maximum damage. And counter damage too, can I forget about counter damage? Shadows of Yarnum. <laughs> like, I don't hate them. <laughs> I like the concept. Although, like, it just gets- they just do a lot of damage sometimes, especially you just, like, take- Counter damage in this game just, like, ruins a bunch of boss fights, honestly. You just get hit so hard with some of these guys. Especially, like, when the second phase starts, when the snakes start to come out. It's, like, super annoying to dodge. I'll say meh again. The run back is definitely shit as well. <sighs> I want to like them, but, like, and there's some things about them. I don't like. Rum is fucking- God, I fucking hate this boss, man. <laughs> I hate Rom, I really do. There's, I don't like it at all. Like, it looks cool and that's about it. I don't even know what the fucking OST is like. It's probably forgettable because I don't fucking know it. Um, it's not fun. It is not cool. I wish, like, if you killed the spiders, the spiders could, like, maybe either damage the boss or, like, give you a buff to do more damage against the boss or something. I don't know. 
it's just shit. I don't fucking like it. It's not fun. It's just boring. Because, like, if you, like, ignore the spiders and trying to hit the boss, you're probably going to get one-shot by the spiders because they do, like, insane damage. And when the second phase starts, Romus is going to do a bunch of just stupid AoE attacks. Like, none of it's fun. <laughs> uh, Dark Beast Pal, I think, is good. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, he looks really cool. I want to like him, but, like, his stupid fucking hitboxes sometimes and his really fast attacks... And like when you fight, by the time you fight this guy, if you do fight him in Yahoo he just dies in like a couple of hits anyway. I'm gonna say meh. <laughs> Wonder Bond, this is just a fucking terrible boss fight. It's just the same thing as the, what do you call it? The Tower Knight from Demon Souls, but just worse. Like how do you take a concept from Demon Souls and it make it worse? Because it's the same thing. And you can't really say what the fuck's going on as well because it's a stupid fucking camera. It's a bunch of limbs flailing around. Um, Amygdala or Amygdala, whatever the fuck you call it. Another meh boss fight. <laughs> if you've not fight, if you're not fighting with projectiles, or if you're not fighting with, with a weapon that actually has a vertical swipe, this boss fight is like really bad. But if you have those things, it's pretty meh. Still, bro, these base game boss fights are so ass. Holy shit, I like Lagarius. I think Lagarius is a good. I like Lagarius. I'll put him bottom good tier. He does have really cool move sets. Um, I. Some things that I don't like is how like fast he can like lunge and like the lingering hitboxes that he get with some of his sword swipes. They can be kind of annoying, but like the he's actually probably one of the more fun boss fights to try and parry, especially when he does like cool lunging attack. And you can try and bait out some of the attacks to get a cool backstab. I think it gives you like a decent amount of openings that are really nice to punish. There are like some weird inconsistencies as well. Like I don't like the fact that you're fighting on some stupid rooftop. I don't like that. Um, he does get like an invisible hitbox like beneath him. When he does that jumping attack, that can be kind of annoying. And sometimes when he does that, like, that AoE, um, thing that he leaves on the ground, sometimes it doesn't, like, die straight away. And that's kind of hard to explain, but, yeah. Uh, Mikolash, fucking garbage. I hate this guy! Actually, the worst! <laughs> there is nothing good about him. I hate the way he sounds, I hate his stupid head, I hate chasing him, I hate his stupid running animations, I hate his punching animations, I hate every single time he does a call beyond, and I just, it just makes me cringe every single time that I look at him. I fucking hate him. Once you know how to fight him, is not that bad, but I still fucking hate him. <laughs> um, Celestial Emissary. Terrible. It's not even a boss fight. And they die in like three hits anyway, who cares. Um, Abritus. Like, it's just the same thing as, like, these bosses. Like, Cleric Beast, Vicar, Emilia, Abritus. I'm gonna say a Cleric Beast is good. I, I would give Cleric Beast a pass because... A uh, pass because, you know, at least it's the first boss fight. But it's just, like, it's like a large boss fight where, like, you're trying to figure out what the fuck's going on, but the camera is just ruining anything that could have made the boss fight good. Um, and Abritus has that stupid charging attack that I fucking despise. So, yeah. Because uh, Emilia has these stupid AoEs. That you just always get hit by, and then she has the stupid charging attacks. Can you shut the fuck up? Somebody ban him. <laughs> uh, Murgo! I like Murgo. I really do. I think Murgo is a good- I think I'm gonna say a high good. Only thing- only problem with Murgo is it's probably a bit too easy. If it, if it was like a- if you had like an extra melee attack or something else to make her a bit more challenging, I'd probably put Murgo into the amazing tier. But I think Murgo is actually really cool. Um, really cool design, really eerie, atmospheric. The boss, the attacks feel nice to dodge. Um, you get plenty of openings to punish and like just melt the boss as well. The annoying thing can be like that weird phantom shadow phase, but you can dodge it though, it's not like it's guaranteed. So if you get punished by it, it's kind of really annoying. It's like 30 seconds of just running around in a circle. I wish that attack could be like more punishable. Um, it kind of is a bit punishable, you can, but like if you try to attempt it, it's not going to be really good, but... It's like missing one thing. Like missing one thing to be amazing, honestly. But I, I like the boss fight. And then we get to the DLC fucking masterpiece. This is the best one so far. Put this one right at the top. First phase, kind of cringe. We get it. It's fine. It's Some attacks can be kind of really shit. Which one do I hate the most? The stomping attack. That weird like stomping flailing attack. I don't like that one. Because like a lot of attacks you have to dodge forwards and then that one you have to like dodge backwards and it gets like annoying especially with how fast that he can be. And he gives it like an opening for like half a second. Like his openings don't last that long. But the second phase is flawless. The one time they actually somehow made like a large boss fight, actually good. And the camera wasn't really that big of an issue. Like with these boss fights, Vicar, Emilia, Nebritus, and Cleric Beast, the camera is like a really big issue. But this one's just fucking amazing. And the music. And the music. 
The best OST of all time. And the Living Failures exists. Terrible. Like, I wouldn't mind them that much if they just didn't have so much health. Like, they just have a lot of health. And, like, their at melee attacks is just flailing around like a bunch of idiots. They could have just made it not a boss fight, you know? <laughs> Why do you make it a boss fight? Now I have to judge it as a boss fight. Terrible. Don't care. Maria. Masterpiece. I'm not sure if I like Maria more than Ludwig, though. I always go back and forth. I like Ludwig's second phase a lot more, and Maria is more consistent throughout the entire boss fight, although the third phase can be kind of shit with, like, the fire attacks. Lingering hitboxes can be kind of cringe, and you just take a lot of damage. You're trying to dodge it, and you get hit by the fire attack, and it's, like, really frustrating. But, like, the entire boss fight is really fun to fight. Parrying or not parrying, it's, like, definitely possible and really good. I think it's done really well. And clean animations, clean moveset, there's plenty of nuance to it. There's like a lot of things that you can like about that boss fight. <sighs> Where do I put the often of costs? That's a good question. Um, we just fought him at level one. What um, do I think about this boss fight? Do I think he's a masterpiece? What do I hate about it? The second phase can be super fucking spammy. Like, the the thing that's annoying is, like, the whole game is centered around spamming, and this boss fight just does a bunch of spamming, and you're kind of meant to trade back and forth, but the thing is, he doesn't get staggered with every single hit. It's so like, that's, like, the biggest problem of the boss fight. You try to hit him, and you can't stagger him. You have to, like, hit him, like, three or four times. So you can't really, like, trade out with the boss as much as you could with, like, the other types of ones. So it's kind of just, like, waiting for him to finish his moveset, and you get, like, one attack off, and, like, that's about it. <laughs> Um, I don't know. And he yells way too much. Probably amazing. <laughs> he yells way too much. Second phase can be a bit spammy. I don't like the lightning attack move. Well, the lightning attack is not that bad. Because they are always spawns in the middle of the arena. If you fight on the beach, it's just always going to, like, miss you. Not miss, but you can dodge it a lot easier. Because it doesn't, like, track towards you. It just spans, spawns at the same time. Um, Elden Ring, yeah, Elden Ring's here. Uh, Lawrence, I don't fucking care what anybody says. Masterpiece! Yes! <laughs> this boss fight's fucking cool. I like this. Nah, probably not. Amazing. <laughs> um, amazing. Amazing. I think it's kind of just fighting like mana. I think it's like fighting manas. It's like the same thing. Um, it does get pretty annoying with like how much damage that it can do and like the lingering effects with the aoe's um but like all the whole first phase the attacks feel nice to dodge you get plenty of openings you can actually strafe a lot of attacks to get openings that way um and the second phase you're gonna strafe like almost all the attacks too it's not it's honestly the second phase is easier but the music is just fucking amazing he looks really cool it is the reskin version of the cleric beast but he's on fire and it's red therefore he looks cooler I know, I fucking love Lawrence. I really do. I don't care what anybody says. People don't like that opinion, but you can go suck a dick. Um, Yarnum, why are we including Chalice Dungeon bosses? Um, this boss fight is just projectile spam and teleport spam, but actually not done that poorly. Because, like, what else is she really going to do? I wish they gave her, like, more of, like, a cool cinematic arena. Because it just gave her, like, a regular Chalice Dungeon arena, which is kind of cringe. And the fact that she keeps spamming those, like... You get caught up in that grab attack like every single like two seconds, which is like really cringe. Um, I don't know. It kind of feels like, it definitely feels like you're fighting cut content. It really does. <laughs> it really does. Um, I'll say meh. Because she has like some cool, she has some really cool animations though. But like there's some frustrating parts about the boss fight. And then German, um... I'm gonna say amazing. I'm not a German fan. The whole boss fight is centered around parrying, which... The bosses like Gascoigne and Maria are not like that. Like, if you, you can fight Maria and Gascoigne without parrying, and the boss fight just flows so nicely, and it's really good. German, you can kind of do that, but it's nowhere near as consistent. It's like way more frustrating, especially when the second phase starts, when he gets a bunch of high armor attacks. But, like, parrying him is, like, really satisfying, but, like, that's, like, the only way to fight him, which is why I'm probably not going to put him into the Masterpiece tier. But the uh, OST is amazing. The boss arena is really good. His animations 
are really clean as well, but like that's just like the only thing. It's like it's centered around the parrying. If you try to do it without parrying, it's like not fun at all. Um, I'll probably put him. I think I like Orphan of Cost better. I think I put Orphan of Cost above Lawrence. I'll rearrange it at the end, but that's where I, that's how I think. Uh, Moon Presence, I think mechanically it's shit, but it's still going to get into the good tier because it has the coolest, the single coolest opening cutscene of all time. So for that reason alone, it just gets into the good tier because everything else about the boss fight mechanically is kind of ass. I don't really know its fucking moveset that well. It's just a bunch of flailing around. There's some cool attacks like AoE attacks that it gets, but yeah, I think just based on design alone ends the cutscene. It gets into the good tier. Nothing else fucking matters. Okay, Dark Souls 3 time. Gundir. Meh. I mean, the second phase is kind of just like shit because it's like a camera is like the big part of the problem. Um, it would have been a good boss fight if it wasn't for that because I can give it a pass because it's the first boss fight that you do. So I think just meh. I think Cleric Beast was done better. But like, it's just meant as a tutorial boss fight, not that hard. It's okay. Vort, though, is a good boss fight. I'm gonna put it high good. Because it's really fucking cool. <laughs> he has a really cool design. His attacks feel nice to dodge. Good to punish. Amazing. Amazing OST. Probably not high good. I probably put middle good. Because it is pretty easy. This one should have been the first boss fight, honestly. Well, it kind of is. But there's, like, nothing bad I can say about it. It's just like a great boss fight. Nice to dodge. Cool to attack. Cool, um... OST. I don't know. Um, this thing is fucking terrible. <laughs> Curse Red of Great Wood is dog shit. I don't like anything about this boss fight. Like, it is pretty satisfying to explode the eggs. Um, the fact that you can't lock onto them is kind of cringe, especially when you're fighting with projectiles and doing spell runs. Don't like that concept. Um, having the whole arena surrounded by a bunch of, like, other enemies can be kind of annoying. The attacks don't feel fun to dodge. They just it, There's no, nothing really satisfying about the fight other than like popping the fucking balls. Uh, Crystal Sage is basically the third iteration of the Fool's Idol. They went from the Fool's Idol to Pinwheel and now we have the Crystal Sage. Another bad boss fight. It has like some more nuance. They've gotten like more and more nuanced over time when they reskin this boss. But it's still not that going to be that fun because it's still a teleporting boss that spams a bunch of projectiles. Which is something I dislike. Let's keep in mind, my list. I don't like the boss. I don't think anybody does anyway. Uh, Deacons of the Deep, another terrible boss fight. It's just a bunch of enemies in one room. Pretty funny, but um, don't care. <laughs> don't care. And when you're using certain types of like attacks that can like, pretty like poking attacks, the boss fight can just last so long and you're probably never gonna get cursed. Yeah, it is what it is. Abyss Watches, uh, where'd I put the Abyss Watches? I put it into the amazing tier. <sighs> Let me think about it for a second. It's either amazing or good. I'm not a fan of the Abyss Watchers. The OST is really good. The first phase is like, it's interesting, but it's not fun. Like, sometimes it gets more frustrating than not. Like, I just want to fight the boss 1v1 and not get someone else. Like, three other people involved and it's like a whole fucking thing. <laughs> um, the second phase is just backstab farm. Like, there's nothing really too special about it. The boss fight's honestly boring when you just backstab farm and then... He's not even that hot as well, I don't know. <laughs> Probably leave him there, he's still cool though. I'm trying to think, compare him to like the good tier. I put him bottom of the amazing. He has a cool OST. Walner is fucking terrible. God, the first half of this game has such mid bosses, holy fuck. Um, what do I say about this guy? I wish it was like more of like a visual indicator on like the bracelets when you're hitting them. Um, but they're just not fun to fight at all. Like trying to dodge his attacks, kind of cringe. Anyway, finally some good fucking boss fights. Pontiff Sullivan, masterpiece. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of these. And yeah, Pontiff is really fucking cool. Amazing moveset. You can punish them multiple different ways, whether you parry him, dodge him, you can strafe some attacks. The second phase is one of like the coolest um, iterations of a duo boss fight they've done. I think it's probably the most respectable, honestly. Done really well. Good concept of a duo boss fight. Kind of like the Dark Lurker, but just probably cooler, honestly. I like this boss fight. He has cool lore, cool OST as well. Cool boss arena. He's just fucking neat. Aldrich, on the other hand, is not. I'm gonna say bad. 
I don't like a boss fight that teleports and spams a bunch of projectiles. Not cool. Even when he does his melee attacks, it's still not even that cool. It's just hitting a big giant slug. It's like the epitome of like, how dare you stand here where they stood? Where are they? Them. <laughs> yeah, bad. Don't care for them. Um, Yom. I'm gonna say meh. He looks cool. It's just, they could have made the boss fight just more fun. Like when using the Storm Ruler, which they did with Rykard by having like, you know, the Serpent Hunter be like really fun to use. But like, Yom, Yo it's just not fun to fight with the Storm Ruler. It takes like forever to charge up and you're just hitting him and he dies in like five hits and it's like, cool. Like his attacks, they're not bad. Like you can fight them pretty easily. You can dodge them pretty nicely. There's the cool animations, cool OST. The moment when he actually summons, what's his name? Um, Sigurd, when you can summon Sigurd in the fight. That's pretty cool. Cool cutscene. Um, and then, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> that's about it. Like, fighting him without the Storm Ruler is not even that much more fun anyway, because you have to specifically hit the one hand. So, like, I don't know, they could have made him a, a lot better. If they just made it more fun, if they just gave him more health and just made it more fun to fight with the Storm Ruler, I feel like it probably would have been, um, probably not more health, but just make it more fun to fight with the Storm Ruler. Um, Dancer. I like the Dancer. I don't think it's Masterpiece, but I like it. I think I like it better than the Abyss Watches, though. Some of her, like, roll-catching attacks can be, like, mega cringe. And by the time that you fight her in the game, like, the intended way to fight her, you get, like, you're probably, like, too overpowered. So, like, you kind of have to fight her, like, halfway in between. Because, <laughs> like, yeah, if you fight her later in the game, she's, like, way too, way too much, or way too easy. Because you just have a lot of health, and then you do a lot of damage. Um, so I think Amazing is where she goes. Because she has really clean animations. Very melodic movements. The OST matches her boss fight really nicely. I like the sound effects of her, like, stomping around and stuff like that. Or walking around. But yeah, some of, like, the roll catching attacks and, like, the balancing is a bit off. She does have a fat dumpy, though. I'll give her that. Osiris! Fucking terrible. Don't like this boss fight at all. It kind of just reminds me of just fighting a Bloodborne boss. That's what it's like. I say bad, not terrible. I think I'm putting a bit too many bosses in the terrible tier. That's yeah, fine. It kind of reminds me of, like fighting the Bloodstar Beast. Just a bunch of just stupid fucking attacks that he gets that you can't even see anything what's going on. And that stupid charge attack that he gets is disgusting. Yeah, I don't like it. Don't like it. There's some attacks that are cool and redeemable, like the spinning attack that he gets. The breath attack could be kind of cool. But like, it's just like fighting a Bloodborne boss. Bunch of flailing around. Why isn't Capra Demon in the garbage? Because I actually don't mind fighting him 1v1, and it's not that bad. <laughs> it's just like the boss arena, the camera, and the dogs, which is 90% of it, so. Bad tier it is. Wait, where did I put him? Did I put him in the bad tier? I don't have a problem with him most times, honestly. Um, where the fuck? Champion Gundir, fucking masterpiece. Uh... No, if I put Orphan of Cost in the amazing tier, I have to put him in tier. I really like Champion Gunder. I just think that he has- that he doesn't have much health. But he is like really fun to fight. He's like just a great 30 second experience, just like me in real life. Power him a few times, attack him, clean animations. The second phase is really fun to fight against. I think he's an amazing boss fight. I'll put him a high amazing tier. Dragon Slayer Armor. Do I put this one into the Masterpiece tier? Probably not. I think... If the second phase changed up a bit more and probably made it a bit like another couple of attacks, he probably could have got masterpiece. But I think he's just amazing, very solid and amazing. His attacks feel very nice to dodge. Clean animations once again. Always tastes pretty cool. The pilgrim butterfly spamming projectiles can be kind of annoying, although it doesn't really do much damage, so not that big of a deal. This tier list is cringe. Somebody fucking ban him. Thank you. <laughs> As I said it, bend. Make your own stupid tier list. This is my list. Lothric, masterpiece. I like Lothric a lot. Do I like him better than Sir Alone? Yeah, put him here. Hell yeah. My favorite base game boss for real. Cool atmospheric moment. Amazing OST. The fact that they made a boss fight that teleports around a whole bunch but still didn't make it frustrating is amazing because for one, the teleporting animation actually has a hitbox, so you can actually damage them throughout that part. 
I think my only gripe is that the second phase doesn't change up too much. And probably just make it more annoying sometimes with like with more projectiles being spammed and more teleporting. But it's still an amazing boss fight. No need to change it up much if the boss fight is already amazing. Flawless. 10 out of 10. Old Demon King, I think, is actually underrated. It's nothing too crazy, but I think it's just a good boss fight. I think it's just like... Kind of looks like the Cleric Beast when you look at them side by side. Huh. I think it's cool. Gets a few cool attacks that, you, that feel nice to dodge. I'll put him high good tier, actually. Put up here. Nothing too crazy. His AoE attacks are kind of very cool and cinematic. Uh, Matt Kostra, thank you for the follow, man. I think it's just a cool moment. I'll probably upload this to YouTube, yeah. Um, what else was I saying? And it does have a pretty cool interaction, kind of similar to like Sif. Where did I put Sif? I don't know. But when you have him like really weak and it does that big explosion. There's Sif, yeah. I think, I think it's just very cool. I don't know why people like herald like Sif as like this amazing boss fight for that one moment. But then look at the old Demon King. It's like that shit was mid. No, it's not. It's pretty cool. High, high good tier. At the top of the good tier, actually. Ancient Wyvern is fucking terrible. Look, the thing is, if the Ancient Wyvern wasn't a boss fight, we'll just be looking at that moment as just like a really cool moment, but they made it, they just gave it a boss health bar, so I'm gonna have to judge it as such. And the boss fight itself is just running and plunging attack. That was like garbage. <laughs> as, a, as a boss fight, it's fucking garbage. But if they just didn't give it a health bar and just made it just like regular like area, and like you killed the boss and it gave you like a key to unlock the door that's directly in front of you instead of teleporting you to another location that's literally right next to the area that you're at. I don't know why they did that. What was the point of that? They made this thing a boss, you kill the boss and it teleports you somewhere else. That's like literally right next to the area that you're at. Why? That's so stupid. Because like, ugh, whatever, he goes. <laughs> We're not going to get into that. Um, anyway, Nameless King. Masterpiece, I don't care. First phase, yeah, it uh, has like three health. Like you can kill the dragon in like a couple of hits. The camera is a, obviously a problem, but like just lock off. Any single time you're fighting a large boss fight, just lock off. But the second phase is where it's at. Really cool attacks, all feel nice. Plenty of openings to punish. Uh, Nicola, thank you for the follow. Probably the coolest boss design as well. Out of all the guys that have bosses and with armor, I think Nameless King looks the coolest. I'm not gonna lie. I like the design. Cool hair. <laughs> this looks like a cooler version than Gwyn. I like him. Like the aesthetic as well. Freyda, fucking masterpiece. Do I like it better than Maria? I do. Yeah. I'm putting Freyda at the top now. Freyda has... She's so fucking cool, man. First phase is pretty basic. Nothing too crazy. Second phase is honestly like a really cool... Duo boss fight opinion- uh, opinion. I was reading the chat. Um, really good duo boss fight mechanic. Like, hitting the big guy is- that makes the whole duo boss fight, like, pretty easy. But... It is really cool concept. They both actually have different types of attacks that complement one another. And it's not just, like, two bosses as being aggressive. They kind of take their time. One's the spamming projectiles, and you kind of like, keep your eye on both. I think it's really nice. And then the third phase just takes it over the top, and it has an amazing boss fight. Yeah, 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Grave Tender and Great Wolf. Holy fucking shit. I think the NPC part of this fight is an absolute fucking travesty. This thing is garbage. But the wolf fight, I honestly like it more than Sif. So it balances out to be meh. It balances out. Because I honestly would put it into the high good tier. If, it, if the wolf itself was just the main fight and it had like one more attack and a little bit more health, I think it would get a good boss fight. Because honestly, the 1v1 fight with a dog is actually really good. But this the NPCs and the dog at the beginning, like why the fuck does that exist? <laughs> why? But yeah, the Grave Tender is just a better Sif, yeah. The animations are so clean. When that second phase happens and you see like the red eyes and like the frost breath attack, it's so clean, it's so cool. And it was ruined. It was ruined. And if they probably changed the design as well, because he does look like a very basic wolf. If they made him more distinguishable, I think that would have fixed a lot of the problems people had with him too. Anyway, the big boy DLC. Okay, we're going to talk about Half-Light first. <laughs> um, meh. 
I think half Light is the worst boss fight in the entire game when looking at the NPC, because NPCs are fucking disgusting. But if you're looking at the online feature of half Light, I like PvP, and I like PvP boss fights. I think it's really cool. So I'm just going to say meh. I'm just going to look at the way that it's intended, because it's intended as a PvP boss fight. But if you're looking at the NPC, it's fucking dog shit, and it can go in the garbage tier as well. I hate NPCs. Um, anyway, oh, would you look at that? Look at this run. Look at this. All S tier. All, all of Masterpiece. Masterpiece. The best duo boss fight ever made in the Demon Princes. The first phase, just they complement each other really nicely. I kind of wish they had like different designs so we can distinguish them a bit more. But there's really cool attacks to dodge. You get plenty of openings. They're not even that challenging as well. They probably have like a decent amount of health, but... It just makes for like a really nice boss fight. The entrance is really cool. The boss arena is nice. The second phase, depending on which one you fight. Either one is still perfectly fine. Have really cool animations. The boss fight looks really cool. 10 out of 10. Gale, the best boss in the entire Soul series. Literally, from when I played Ring City when it first came out. I think I fought him the first or the second day. The second that I fucking fought him and I died to him when I had him like really weak, I was like, this is a fucking fantastic boss fight. It was like the one time that I ever fought a boss and I died to him when I had him weak. And I was like, that was fucking cool. I can't wait to fight him again. S tier boss fight. The best. Everything. It was like built up to this one moment, all three games leading up to the final moment. Amazing OST. Amazing boss arena. Clean animations. All the attacks feel nice. You can strafe some of them. Everything about it is really cool. And the third phase comes in, the lightning comes down, he does a cool front flipping attack with a crossbow combo. Oh, shit's clean. S tier, mid tier, fucking masterpiece. Oh my god, these, ugh, these DLC bosses are so good. Um, Madeir is one of the coolest looking dragons like literally ever made. Um, all of his animations look really cool. The OST is fucking flawless. All of his attacks feel nice to dodge as well. The fact that he has a really big giant head that's not too far away, he does have like a long neck as well, is actually a huge W because you can actually hit his head pretty nicely, it's like lower to the ground, so you're not having to like hit his head when it keeps moving around because it's on a long neck, nothing like that shit, or you have to like, keep hitting his feet or his toes, it's, it's centered around the staying in front of him, dodge his like claw combos, it's just nice, everything about it. Masterpiece! Masterpiece. And then Solo Cinder, another masterpiece, another one, another one. Do I like him better than Nameless King? Yeah, I do. Another masterpiece. Goaded OST. Goaded fucking first phase. Although sometimes the curved sword and the magic based phases can be a bit annoying. Um, but either way, really cool concept. Second phase is just what Gwyn should have been with actually like nuanced movesets, like incorporating like, you know, projectile attacks with lightning or fire, having more of a different moveset than like three different swapping attacks like you get with Gwyn. It's really good. <sighs> Dragon isn't a high tier. It's because you're bad at the game. Somebody ban him. Um, Lady Butterfly. Okay, we're going into um, Sekiro. Lady Butterfly. Oh, she's yes, cool. Daddy. I like her. She's good. Nothing too crazy. Um, the second phase can be kind of cringe, which does like that summoning bullshit and like jumping around on the stupid like tripwires. It does make for a cool concept. Um, but she's not as, like, satisfying to fight in terms of, like, the whole back and forth that you can get with other Sekiro bosses. But she's respectable enough. I like her moveset. Gyobu Masakata Oriwa! Meh. <laughs> Meh. Out of all the fucking bosses that you fight, this one is so fucking mid. Because, like, it doesn't work the way uh, all the other bosses work. You can't, you can't, like, do... It doesn't feel cool to deflect. His attacks don't feel cool to dodge. Where to put the Twin Princes in the S tier where they belong? Um, it's just like chasing a horse back and forth and just whacking on a horse. And it's just... No. Why do people even like this boss? Outside of the cool entrance. Um, Genichiro. Masterpiece. It's a Sekiro boss fight. Like, come on now. <laughs> it's Sekiro. Sekiro has flawless fucking combat. It's a masterpiece of a boss fight. Everything about it. Like, the whole back and forth that you get with Sekiro, it's so cool. Like, the fact- This is why the Souls formula should just retire and just incorporate the Sekiro formula. Because, like, you no longer have to wait for, like, bosses to finish attacking, then you can attack yourself. You can attack mid-combo, you can cancel your attacks mid-combo. 
you can attack, you can like dodge so many different ways where you can counter so many different ways, either deflecting, dodging, Mikiti counters, lightning reversal. There's so much stuff that you can do and it's, oh, every fight just flows so nicely. And Genichiro has a cool moveset as well. I just like it. The monkeys! <laughs> Bad. Bad. Look, I... Th <laughs> um, they're funny. I like monkeys. They're cool. But like chasing them around my first playthrough was the most obnoxious experience I ever had in my entire life. It was the worst fucking thing. Once you memorize the path thing, it's obviously not that bad. And it's just funny just beating a bunch of monkeys. But like your first time around, it's like so fucking shit. <laughs> but it's cool though. I like monkeys. Speaking of which, why do they separate these two? It's the same fucking thing. Unless like this one's the duo boss fight and this one, okay, this is the duo boss fight. Okay, cool. Um, Guardian Ape, fucking absolute masterpiece. Is it a masterpiece? <sighs> trying to think. Yeah, masterpiece, yeah. It is. I think, like, if you were to fight an ape, like, how else would you make it? Yeah, how else would you make it? I don't know. I think it's just done really well. Like everything about it, like it does like mechanically in terms of like fighting it, in terms of like dodging its movesets and countering it and stuff like that. It's probably not the most amazing thing, but like in terms of like its animations, it's just fucking amazing. And it's like interactions that it gets. Like the way that it moves, its sound effects, the jumping around, the fact they can like just yeet itself into the air, throw a bunch of poop at you, fart in your face. I think it has so much like flavor and personality to the boss fight, I think that's enough reason to put it into the masterclass. And then obviously the second phase adds so much more to the boss fight as well. Makes for a very, very unforgettable experience. Is that a word? Maybe. Yeah, that's a word. Of course it's a word. I think it's a masterpiece, yeah. <laughs> Fart in your face, it has so much flavor. <laughs> Probably not the correct forming of words, but, you know, we got there. Fake Monk, I don't care for this one. The fight lasts way too long, and it's not that interesting. I think pretty meh. I like the Corrupted Monk, though, because it's, like, more nuanced. Bit more interesting. It's, like, the same fucking thing, but just, like, it's just way longer. It's a lot cooler when you have snap sneezes and stuff, so I think it's just meh, because, yeah, it's the way it is. Um, Headless Ape is fucking garbage. <laughs> it's the same thing, but just as a duo boss fight, it's like, come on now. You had to do this. Make a stupid duo boss fight. And it doesn't even have a pillar. How are you going to make a duo boss fight without a pillar? But then again, the Demon Princess didn't have that. That's because that one's amazing. That's 10 out of 10. <laughs> Either way, it's fine. I mean, that one's not fine, though. No. This one sucks. Ow! Fucking amazing masterpiece. 10 out of 10. Do I like him better than Genichiro? Yes, I do. I like him better than Sir Alone as well. And I like him better than these boss. This is, it's a secondary boss. What am I doing? Put it here. <laughs> it's a secondary boss fight. This one's the best one so far. Um, yeah. Al is just a fucking great boss fight. What? There's something that I don't like about him. And I don't know what it was. There's one thing that I had a complaint about. I think sometimes he... I think he's a bit too big. So when he takes like a step backwards, a lot of your attacks can just miss. And that gets pretty frustrating. So I probably put him here. Our father is way better though. Just outclassed by Al Father. I'll probably put him here. But he still has an amazing fight. Emma and Ishin. That's actually together as one boss fight. I like, I never do like the shooter ending, so I don't really know. Like, I've done it like once. And it's still a masterpiece. <laughs> it still has a masterpiece. I know, we're going to talk about Ishin later anyway. Um, Corrupted Monk, I think this one's an amazing fight. Is this the first secondary boss an amazing? Yeah. Um, I like Corrupted Monk. Plenty of cool mix-ups. It, it doesn't really fight the same way because you can't really like stagger the boss that well. It's kind of like a different fight when it comes to like the cool ones like you get with Ishin and Genichiro and stuff like that. But it still is really cool. Cool boss fight. I can't really, I don't know. I can't really think of anything to say. I've already said everything that, that needs to be said about that boss. Um, Divine Dragon, the coolest. Coolest gimmick boss fights in the entire series because it looks really fucking cool and shooting big lightning at a dragon is based... So it's going to go into the good tier, but it's still a gimmick boss fight, so therefore I do not care. <laughs> I'm not that engaging, really. Alfather fucking masterpiece. We're going to put this one right... Do I like it better than Sister Fredo? Yes, I do. 
Do you like it better than Madeira? Do you like Madeira better than Freda? Okay, we'll organize it later. It's fine. We'll organize it later. But our father is really fucking cool. Very challenging fights, but the whole fight flows very nicely. Really cool interactions with how he can, like, Mikiti counter you. He can throw his fucking owl. Then he can teleport into the owl with some cool, like, backward front flipping attack. I don't know. He's just really fucking clean. I like him. Demon of Hatred. Masterpiece. Oh, that's gonna ruffle some feathers, but I don't give a fuck. I think this is like the um the Lawrence of Sekiro. Do I put him into the masterpiece section? I think he has a bit too much health for him to. Oh, I put him amazing. Put him amazing. Like I think he has like three phases, and like two of them work the exact same way. I think one of the phases could be gone. Um, I love this boss fight though. I think all of his attacks feel very nice. Um, you can either dodge them, you can deflect them. Either way, it works perfectly fine. I think the fight has lasted a bit too long. I think it's the only thing. But, like, I think mechanically he just works very nicely. Yes, he works like a Dark Souls boss fight, but you know what? In Sekiro, you also get an iframe dodge. And you get a katana that can just R1 spam. So, you have all the tools that a Dark Souls boss, or that a Dark Souls character has. Fight him like a Dark Souls boss, then. <laughs> um, anyway. And then the best boss fight in Sekiro. Ishin, the Sword Saint. We'll put this one right here at number two. Um, this boss fight, everything about it from start to finish is just fucking flawless. Amazing animations. Really cool back and forth in the first phase. Just constantly trying to like dodge the same... I don't know. I can't really say anything right now. I kind of, it's hard to explain boss fights, honestly. I suck at it. <laughs> it's not like talking about weapons, but he's, he's cool. <laughs> I like him. That's all that matters. Um, inner, oh, it has the inner versions as well? I mean, they can all go into the master space. It's like the same shit, but it's harder. I don't know. Why do they have the inner versions, though? I haven't fought these guys in a while. We're not going to talk about them, because, you know, they're all, like, the same thing, but just, like, more challenging, I guess. But they can all go into the master space section, because, you know, it's the same thing. Anyway, Elden Ring time. Oh, boy. Godric. Meh. Don't care for him. He has a really cool, um, voice actor. Really cool cutscenes. Mechanically, just a bunch of delayed attacks that I do not like at all. Um, I like his design. Some of the attacks can be kind of cool to try and punish. But um, for the most part, I don't fucking like him. Just a bunch of delayed attacks. Does not feel fun to fight. Didn't like him at all. Ah, uh, Renala. I think Renala is the bad boss fight. <laughs> I do not care. I don't like... It's my list, okay? I don't like... Projectile attacks. I don't. Like, if you're a boss that spams nothing but projectiles and spams summons, I'm not gonna like you. Doesn't matter how cool you make it. Doesn't matter how interesting it makes it. It's I'm not gonna like it. It's not for me. So it's gonna be bad every single time. The first phase is just a shitty fucking gimmick. You can beat up a bunch of kids, which that is kind of based. But yeah, no, this is kind of cringe. You like Godric? You can like Godric. I don't. <laughs> I don't have to like him. I don't know. Like, when you, when you go play the other games and you come... Play like Elden Ring, obviously like Lost, and you fight bosses like Godric, it's like, ugh. Ugh. This is not cool. Radon! Amazing. I put him high amazing. High amazing. There's some attacks that I have problems with, like some roll catching types of attacks. Sometimes the camera can be a bit jank as well. I don't know, I can't really, I don't know, I fight him so many times, it's hard to like, I can cheese him every single time. But, like, he's really cool, though. Um, cool design. Cool animations. The boss fight flows nicely. It's, like, the closest thing you actually have to a raid boss in this game as well. Um, boss arena is really cool. The OST is really nice. Um, the second phase has bloody, plenty of cool animations. Although, some of the attacks... You can go, like, a long time without actually doing any damage. Godric is S. You like... You guys like Godric? <laughs> what do you like about Godric? <laughs> What's so good about him? Like, outside, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, Astel. Another meh. It, this, he looks really cool, but it's just... He's too big. <laughs> he's too big. Hitting his head can be kind of cringe sometimes. A lot of his attacks are kind of hard to, like, read. Uh, not really. It's like, it's just a spectacle of a boss fight. I can't even, like, explain it, honestly. It's just a spectacle. I actually like the Regal Ancestor Spirit. I think it's pretty cool. I like this one. I'm gonna say good. I'm gonna say good. He has like one of the cooler OSTs in the game. I mean, ugh, but then again, the whole teleporting thing 
and the regening of health makes the boss fight last way too long. But I like the, some of the attacks that he does get. He does have like really skinny legs too. And I'm gonna say... I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say good still. I like him. Raikard, I'm gonna also say good. I can still a gimmick boss fight and I can never, I can never really love gimmick boss fights. I never can. This one is the closest thing to like not really being that much gimmick. Um, because you still have like a moveset that you can dodge. And you have openings and stuff like that. I don't know. I don't really like him that much. Especially like the first phase, when that stupid like AOE attack that you can't really dodge, that's pretty annoying. Um, the poison attack, it's just like running back. I don't know. It's like a lot of just, just running, <laughs> honestly. And like the second phase when he does that stupid like AOE attack, obviously you can like just cheese him when you get to that point anyway. But that skull spawning attack is, yeah, no. I think good. I think it's just too, too annoying, honestly. Four to sex. I'm gonna say... I think he's like one of the most cinematic boss fights in the entire series. He looks really cool. <sighs> the hell phase, yeah, whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah, that one sucks. Um, my only problem with Fortis Axe is that he's too skinny. That's my only fucking problem. He does have the coolest OST in the entire game, though. I fucking love his OST. Um, if he just had fatter legs and maybe, like, not as skinny as a fucking, like, neck and head, I'd probably like him more. <laughs> but, like, that's my biggest problem. I know, like, there's a whole thing where he tracks the lightning towards you. I actually like that concept. I actually think that makes it pretty interesting. Um, all of his lightning attacks that he gets when he comes to the sky and comes crashing down, all those things look fucking really cool. He doesn't really spam it that much either. Um, I just wish he got, like, and he does have, like, lingering hitboxes with his AoE attacks. I don't know. Because this is a very cinematic boss fight. That's about it. <laughs> with a cool OST. Uh, Morgoth is a fucking masterpiece. Morgoth is a masterpiece. He has probably, like, the most nuanced boss fight on this entire, I mean, in the entire game, honestly. Constant fucking spamming of attacks, but you can position yourself very nicely. Um, to where you can just like bait out certain types of attacks. But he has this very, really, really cool looking stuff that you can dodge. And the second phase does change it up pretty significantly, but still kind of keeps the same flavor. And it still feels like a very nice extension. Um, boss Arena is really cool. OST is really nice. Really clean animations. I like this boss fight. He needs more health. Just fight him earlier in the game. <laughs> Just go, just, instead of like killing a bunch of bosses early on, just fight him earlier. I think he has like fine health for his location. Um, Fire Giant, fucking terrible. I want to say garbage. I'll say terrible, because he still has like some redeeming factors to him, but like he's just still like a fucking large boss fight with an like, enormous amount of health, and it's just so fucking boring. Holy shit. Um, in the first phase, he takes, like, one step, and it covers, like, the entire arena. You've got to constantly chase him back and forth. Um, that's pretty cringe. You just have to, like, read a bunch of stomping attacks. That's all he gets. In the second phase, it's a bit more nuanced. But, like, unfortunately, your openings in the second phase are just not that long. You can, like, hit, like, once per, like, 10 seconds, and he has, like, even more damage negation in the second phase. And it's, like, it can be really buggy. The arena just makes the boss fight so much worse as well. Because, like, plenty of fire attacks, a fire attack can deflect off the fucking trees and stuff like that and hit you, like, multiple times. And if you get hit on your horse, hits you a bunch of times. I do like the concept of, like, him summoning the two fireballs and they track towards you. That makes, like, a pretty interesting part of the fight. It's a cool mechanic. Um, and some of the attacks can feel nice to punish if you have certain types of positioning. And you can bait out certain types of attacks. But like for the most part, it's like it's a fucking boring boss fight with a constant, constant spamming and shit. So some things that I like, so I'm not going to put him in garbage tier. I think Malekith is a fucking masterpiece though. Uh, do I like Malekith better than Radon? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Eh, uh, if I'm including the first phase, no, I'm not. Pretty amazing. The first phase is pretty basic. It's nothing too crazy. He has, does have cool animations in the first phase. Um, does feel like fighting a rabid beast. But it's nothing too incredible. The second phase is definitely where it's at, but he does, like, hit very hard. He's actually, like, a, he's a glass cannon. He's a glass cannon. He has, doesn't have much health, and he just hits very hard. And a lot of, like, the jumping type shit, it can be pretty annoying. Like, when you get some pretty shitty RNG, 
it's like a lot of chasing him around, but like he's obviously really cool and kind of similar to like Morgoth and then he has like a pretty complex moveset, but with certain like positioning, you can definitely counteract him pretty nicely. Oh boy, Placid Dude Sex. Okay. I think this is just like Fortisax. It's like a very cinematic boss fight and that's about it because like mechanically, it's not that crazy. But I might like him a bit more than Fortisax because he's not as frustrating because at least he actually has like a larger hitbox. But like he's just a, he's like a snooze fest of a boss fight, honestly. He's like really large. He does a bunch of teleporting. It's a specific, uh, when the second phase starts, it just gets super annoying. Because it's nothing but AoE spam and teleporting. That's all it is. Like, at least with Elden Beast, you can, like, kind of follow him. Because plenty of people complain about Elden Beast running around. But with Placid Dusax, you can't do anything. You just gotta wait for him to come back. <laughs> like, it's cool the first time. If he just did it once per fight. But he can teleport up to four times per fight. Probably more than that. Um, don't like it. And nothing but AoE spam as well. Like, the only cool part about the fight is when he does, like, the teleporting in and out of, like, the melee attacks. That part's really cool. I wish that you could... He kind of like lingered for like an extra second so you can damage him a bit more while he does that. That's the only part of the fight that I feel like I like mechanically. Because everything else is just, it's just a cinematic experience. That's all it is. It's just a spectacle. So I think it's good. Because my first time fighting him, I was like, wow, this is just really fucking cool. This is the only boss fight to where after the first time, I just hated it. After every playthrough. Every playthrough. Most other boss fights I liked more and more with successive attempts. This is the only one. That I've like just started to hate because it's just meant to be good for your first ex playthrough and that's it because it's just a cinematic experience. Uh, Moog is a fucking masterpiece. I think do I like him more than Morgoth? I think Moog is more exploitable in terms of like having strafed, like strafing and stuff like that, and getting openings, which I like a lot. I just like a concept of being able to strafe around, and just get a bunch of openings up. I get a bunch of damage off and a lot longer opening. So I like that concept a lot. So I'm going to like Moog. Um, a lot of the Elden Ring boss fights, they're kind of difficult to learn, but like when you master them, it just feels so cool. And Moog and Morgod is de definitely the same, same tier, honestly. Only annoying thing about the boss fight is that when he just litters a whole bunch of blood flame around the arena, and then like it fucks up your ritual sword talisman buff. That's the only thing. <laughs> like I don't mind taking a little bit of chip damage on the floor, but like, I have my stupid Ritual Sword Talisman. And you're ruining my buff. And the Millennia. Fucking masterpiece. Yeah, masterpiece. Just like Morgoth, this is like a very complicated boss fight that like it's... Learning it and mastering it, it just feels so fucking cool. Like there's nothing cooler than this mastering bosses and very complicated bosses. Well, hence why these boss fights are all in the S tier because they're all very complicated and mastering them just feels so cool. Whereas like some of the other ones, they're probably a bit too easy or like, yeah, probably just a bit too easy. But yeah, these ones, they're, they're just so cool to master. I like them. Millennia, great fucking boss fight. Only problem with it is a stupid hype armor attacks that resets the poise. That's like the only thing. That's not really like a millennia problem. That's more like a, an Elden Ring problem because like all bosses that have hype armor attacks do the same thing. But it's like very like, very prevalent with Millennia because she has a lot of high armor attacks. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. But, like, if you're fighting her your first time and first few times, you're not gonna fucking like her. Like, Waterfell Dance, I can dodge that consistently every single time. Like, once you master the boss fight, it's easy. Like, I know how to dodge the Phantom Attack pretty nicely. I know how to dodge water Waterfell Dance pretty nicely. I know how to do it. I know how to exploit it as well. So, like, it's just one of those boss fights. Being that this is my list, based on my experiences, being that I know how to fight the boss, <laughs> I'm going to put it into the S tier. I'm going to rearrange it later. Um, Horolu, Godfrey, same thing. Another very nuanced boss fight that is probably not going to be as fun your first playthrough, maybe. Who knows? It wasn't that fun for me, my first playthrough. It was like, this boss fight is just way too complicated. He has a bunch of grab attacks that all have very similar animations but have very different timings and I get caught by every single grab attack. But once you learn the boss fight and learn the timings and learn its different behaviors and patterns and where you can exploit it in different types of areas, like these boss fights are very exploitable if with this certain types of positioning. That's one thing that I've noticed. Um, ends. 
Strafing attacks, I like to strafe attacks instead of just dodging sometimes. It just makes you feel so cool. Just like sprinting in one direction and it's like actually just dodging the attack. I just like that concept and these boss fights do it the most. I like that. Um, I think I like Godfrey more than all the other Elden Ring bosses though. Except for Radagon. I like Radagon the best, but unfortunately they tied them together. Why would you put the Elden Beast with Radagon? Now I can't put Radagon into the fucking Masterpiece tier because for whatever reason now. I'm still going to put it into Amazing because I love fucking Radagon, but oh, I don't like the Elden Beast majestic. as much. I still think the Elden Beast is better than some of the other large cinematic boss fights like Placidusax and Fortisax. Because at the very least, Elden Beast has some very nuance to his moveset. He has like plenty of different types of melee attacks that all feel very nice to dodge and very cool to punish as well. Like your positioning as well. Just very important in that boss fight. Um, obviously the most frustrating thing about the Elden Beast is when he keeps swimming around all the time. So depending on your RNG, that boss fight can be amazing. I've had fights where Elden Beast doesn't even swim at all. And when you don't have a swimming Elden Beast, the boss fight is like literally amazing. I'm not going to put it Masterpiece, wouldn't, but I think he's an amazing boss fight when he doesn't swim. Um, Radagon though, I think Radagon is the coolest fucking boss fight in the entire game. All of his animations look super clean. All of the attacks feel nice to dodge. He has like delayed attacks, but he has the perfect types of delayed attacks because they're very distinguishable from the other ones. And they're not too delayed. Um, except for the grab attack, but you can just outrun the grab attack. But Radagon does get annoying with the second phase when he constantly teleports. So it's kind of like more RNG based as well, similar to the Elden Beast. Depending on your RNG will be dependent on whether the boss fight is good or not. But I love Radagon. He's my favorite boss with my favorite weapon. He looks super fucking cool. Okay, let's rearrange this shit. Um, Gale number one, Ishi number two, Alfather three. That's fine. That's fine. Do I like Ludwig more than Madeir? Probably not. Um, that's fine. That's fine. Gascoigne can go a bit lower. Al can go a bit lower because it's outclassed. I like Lothric and Lorien. I like Millennium more than Godfrey. Um, I like Solacinda more than Gascoigne. I like Nameless King more than Moog. Yeah. I like that one better than that one. Then... I mean, Emma and Ishin is just really good, though. But, like, Sword Saints Ishin is just the better version of Ishin. Put it there. Um, Radan, Demon of Hatred, Corrupted Monk, Malekith. Ooh, I think Orphan of Cost gets the top of the list. Um, has the same pose. Nice. <laughs> I think Lawrence can go there. I like Lawrence a lot. Oh, Champion Gundir. Oh, higher. Oh, Dragon Slayer Armor. Higher. Oh, there's so many good bosses. What the fuck? <laughs> this is not cool. Ah, oh, shit. Look, I want to put Artorius and stuff in, like, to the S tier because, like, they were S tier for the time. But if I'm judging and comparing all of them together and based on the criteria that I'm using, I can't really put them into the S tier. Because they haven't aged as well as like these bosses are right now, right? They're still pretty basic. They're not as cool and complicated as these ones. <sighs> so I can't really do that. Despite how much I do like them. So I'll probably leave it like this. I think I like Artorius more than German though. Gascoigne above Orphan is vile? Why? I mean, often, of course, is more nuanced than Gascoigne, but Gascoigne is just, like, fucking flawless and everything. Like, everything that Gascoigne does, like, there's no nothing bad you can say about Gascoigne. Maybe, like, the boss arena can be kind of annoying, but you can just fight him upstairs, you know? Yeah, I think Gascoigne has done perfectly. Like, he's not going to be that challenging because he's just the first boss fight, but, like, I think he's just the fucking masterpiece. Often, of course, can be kind of spammy in the second phase, and it's not really kind of... He's just meant to be more challenging because you can't really like stagger him on every single hit. So it gets pretty frustrating. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know. Is that a hot take? Saying Gascoigne is better than Orphan of Kos? I don't know about that. <laughs> I ain't know about all that. Um, might put these ones a bit higher though. I think I could put Abyss Watches. I don't think I like it better than German. I think I like the Dancer better than those ones though. 
Yeah. Yeah. I like Ornstein and Smo better than those. Yeah. That's cool. Okay, now for the good tier, I'm not going to rearrange these ones. These ones suck. Divine Dragon, lower on the list. I think I like Ligarius better than these ones. Rodden can go a bit higher. Um, that one, Storm can go a bit lower, I guess. Flexile Sentry can go a bit lower. Moon Presence can go a bit lower. Rykard can go a bit higher. Do I like Rykard better than Placid Dusex? Yeah, I do. Cool. I put Maiden Australia and where's Vendrick? I had Vendrick here too, didn't I? Vendrick is gone. There he is. <laughs> put that at the bottom because like obviously as boss fights they kind of suck, but like they just cool atmospheric moments. Um. Anyway. Surprising to see Lawrence that high. I fucking love Lawrence. I don't care what anyone says. I love Lawrence. I think he's really cool. And then these ones are the worst of the worst. I should... Oh, where's the Godskin Duo? Fuck, we need to have another one just for the Godskin Duo so I can put it into the garbage tier. God damn it. Oh well. I bet if I did this tier list tomorrow, it'd probably end up looking different anyway. But this is close enough.